John, thank you so much for sitting here and chatting with me about what is, I think, the best movie that I've ever seen. Oh my gosh, thank you, Justine. You're only saying that. We have been friends for a long time. Lots of people don't know that, but like Justine has participated in almost every project for Awesome ever. Um, you've built like wells around the world. We did. There's there's still a few that are that are due to be built in the next couple of years. So awesome. I'm really That's excited. That's so cool. No, but it's so crazy because like I still see you as a YouTuber. So I still I still see myself as a YouTuber. Yeah, I know, but like seeing your Instagram start popping up at like the MTV Movie Awards. For you, what has this whole thing been like? It's been very weird because I still love, like I love YouTube, I love yeah. my YouTube friends and Hollywood is cool, but that's where my heart is. Mm -hmm. um, but it was amazing at the MTV Movie Awards, I was, seating, I was sitting seven seats away from David Hasselhoff. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, it was about the highlight of my life. I couldn't watch what was happening on stage because I was so busy watching Hasselhoff watch what was happening on stage. And what was, well, I mean, that's kind of amazing. I mean, what was he watching? Like, what, what, was, his, what was his reaction? He was a very, um, I don't, I got the feeling that maybe it wasn't the, the most excited day of his life. Yeah, well, I think he was, he's had a really exciting life. He so. has, you know, so like for me, I was like, this is as good as it gets. And for, for the Hoff, I think it was just another award show. For like the YouTubers at home, like watching, I mean, they've, they've been here throughout this whole process. I mean, how do you think the nerd fighters are gonna kind of take to the movie? The great, I mean, the good thing about the movie is that uh, they really worried about Nerdfighteria, like they were really scared about the fans of the book, which is good mm -hmm. um, because I think that's part of why the movie's so good. I think that they want, had a healthy fear of displeasing people who love the book. And I was on set almost the entire time, and I care about the book a lot, obviously, and I just thought they did a great job. They really did, because I. I you You've seen it. I did. I saw it. And I had no idea. I showed up at the screening thinking it was one of those screenings where they shove you in a room. You're alone. So I, I rolled out of bed, go to the screening. I was like, oh my God, there's like hundreds of people. You guys, the whole cast was there. I was like, well, all right. Here, she looked fantastic. Let's, well, thank you. You did. You did. <laughs> but it was so cool. And, and Shailene did such a great job. She's Honestly, an amazing actress. I couldn't believe it. I've never actually seen her play a role like that. No. I mean, well, there, I don't think there are a lot of roles in Hollywood like that where, you know, she's wearing a Canela in her nose for almost every frame of the movie and um, she's just brilliant in it. She just, you know, when you're writing a book you hear the characters' voices in your head and they have a very particular way of speaking and I worried a lot about that on the set. I thought, you know, this is going to be weird for me. I'm going to have to shut up uh, and not say like, no, 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 she says it like this. <laughs> but with, with Shailene and Ansel who plays Gus, like they just sounded like Hazel and Gus to me from the very beginning. He did, and it was so cute. And like hearing people watching the movie, anytime they'd hear their favorite lines, they would go. <gasps> <laughs> like I would hear little sobs and little gasps. I honestly cried throughout the whole movie. And, and something you said when somebody asked you something about the book, I don't remember what the question was, but you said you wrote the book and then you gave it to them like it was theirs. And I thought that was awesome because each person in that theater, I feel like they were watching the movie, but for them, they were feeling something different and relating that to something in their life. That's. Do you think that's like sort of the case? Because it was for yeah, me. Yeah, I think that like. I think that books and movies, and YouTube, YouTube uh, stuff too, like it has to be a gift. Mm -hmm. You know, it has to be something that you make for someone and then you let, you, you say to them like, go and take this and if it can be useful to you, great. I hope it can be. I, I worked really hard on it. I yeah. hope that you like this. I hope that, you know, and that's all you can do. Um, and it's hard, it's hard to let go because, you know, obviously you like the stuff that you made and you work really hard on it, but you have to be able to let it go. But what's cool about it is, you know, I was relating it to situations that I had been and friends that I had lost. And yeah. I think it's cool to be able to see these characters dealing with that and then you can kind of deal at the same time. So I don't know, it was just- Yeah, was I mean, really we've, all, we've all lost people who were important to us and um, it's, it's not something, it, you know, it's funny, like a lot of times people say like, oh, you, you'll get over it or time heals all wounds or whatever, but it's not something you want to get over necessarily. Mm -hmm. I don't want to stop remembering my friends. I don't want to stop caring about them. And um, I want to live with that loss. I want to be okay with it. I, want, I know that they would want me to, to go on living, but I, that doesn't mean that you want to forget. Mm -hmm. oh, it, was, it was great. I'm, I'm so excited. And another thing. You shot a lot of this in Pittsburgh. Yes. I'm from Pittsburgh. Yes. I love Pittsburgh. Everyone that's from Pittsburgh loves the city. So what did you think about it? I was blown away by Pittsburgh. I live in Indianapolis. I love Indianapolis. Nothing against Indianapolis. Great city. Pittsburgh is like Indianapolis plus. Indianapolis plus hills. 
you know? <laughs> yeah. It was actually really hard because the movie's set in Indianapolis, but it was filmed in Pittsburgh, so we had to find flat streets. And that's kind of hard to do. It is. It's yeah. hard to do. Like, it's just such a hilly city. There's so much There's so much topography. There's amazing restaurants. Mm -hmm. I mean, really great restaurants. Shailene is a huge fan of, like, farm-to-table food and organics and even raw food. Mm -hmm. I went to a raw food restaurant oh, on, like, two or three occasions. Yeah. And that was a different thing for me. I'm used to, I'm a big fan of heat. Like, I think it's amazing when we invented fire. I like to celebrate that moment by eating warm food. Well, and she has such a strict diet, so that's awesome that she was able to find places. Yeah, to yeah, there were all these great restaurants that, that she was able to find. And yeah, so I had raw, raw food with Shailene a couple times. And I have to say that, like, this particular restaurant in Pittsburgh made some good raw food, like good, good raw banana bread, and I, I, the whole thing was really cool. But yeah, the, I love the city, I love the people in the city, like almost everybody who worked on the movie, this was really moving to me. Mm. Um, you know, it's like 150 people who work on a movie, it's the people who, you know, drive the stars to and from the, 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 their apartments, and the people who scout locations, and the people who like build sets and everything, almost everyone read the book. That's cool. Um, and almost everybody, w w I mean, I think everybody was there because they cared about the story and it's just so magical. It was the opposite of like what an author expects a Hollywood experience to be like. Everybody was so cool. And I think it was because it was in Pittsburgh. Yeah. You know, just like as a person from Indiana, I felt very at home there. It is, it's a very homey city. And I mean, I have so many friends there and everyone has been so awesome. And I know there's a lot of movies and stuff that have been coming through there. Yeah. So I think that's good because they've prepped for that, so yeah, they're they have, ready. They have a great, like, they have great crew. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of those people um, have made some of my favorite movies, like they made Wonder Boys, um, they made Jack Reacher, which I thought was like, <laughs> Tom Cruise's best movie of the last I five really years. Like that movie. Yeah. I do too. I I'm not impressed. apologizing for no, liking I'm Jack not Reacher. <laughs> it's not just because I'm a Pittsburgh fanboy. I also legitimately enjoyed so, that movie. But that was so scary seeing those scenes in like places that I walked and like grew up. Like, yeah, right. Is, there's a sniper. I'm like, oh my god. Like anytime <laughs> I even drive through the bridge, I'm like, okay. <laughs> You're I'm fine. A little nervous. You're fine. Did you have that experience? I don't know which way you were coming from, but when you first drive through the tunnel, when you come out of the, the tunnel Pittsburgh, and you see the city, it's. Amazing, like you can't even explain that if anyone has ever seen that like it's just the coolest thing ever I mean one of the reasons it is worth going to Pittsburgh is for that experience mm -hmm. I also went up this uh, the Duquesne incline the incline. Yeah, yes. which I have a terrible fear of heights and my <laughs> son was three at the time and We were going up the Duquesne incline with my son and my wife who was pregnant and um, Nope, just kidding. We had a second baby. Okay. I just, I, she was outside of the body. Yep. <laughs> Real I fresh. remembered that now. Yep, <laughs> super fresh. Could have been inside, could have been out that young. So anyway, we're going up the Duquesne incline and Henry was like, this is so fun. And I was having an actual panic attack. And he was like, daddy, look out the window. And I was like, Mm -mm. He's like, Daddy, what's wrong with you? And I was like, nothing, nothing, nothing's wrong with me, man, nothing. And he was like, he was like, Daddy's scared to look out the window, Mommy. And I was like, I'm not scared. And he was like, look out the window. And I was like, I don't want to look out the window. He, he made me three again. I mean, and that thing's like a vintage cart. Oh, no, I was convinced that I, I was in the last five minutes of my life. The scariest thing ever. Yeah, totally. Um, so another question that I wanted to ask you at the screening, but I was too busy crying my eyes out and I couldn't talk. What was the casting process like? Because obviously you have these characters in your mind. So did you sit in on the casting and... I, I didn't sit in, like I didn't uh, go to the auditions, but they sent me the audition tapes. So um, I saw more than a hundred tapes for um, Hazel. Uh, but then Shailene auditioned late in the process and they sent me Shailene's tape and I think everybody agreed that it had to be her. I mean, whoever did the casting, you guys did a great job. Yeah, because... it's Rona Kress. She did an amazing job. The whole, I mean, I thought Willem Dafoe was amazing as Van Houten. Laura Dern as Hazel's fan. mom. I am too. When I found out that he was going to be in that movie, oh, I mean, oh, Boondock Saints? Sorry. Get yeah, it. no, oh God, Willem Dafoe's good. been in like, so many good movies. Also, his parents grew up 10 houses away from me in Orlando, really? Florida. Yeah, so I like, when I was walking my dog when I was a little kid, when I was like eight years old, I would see Willem Dafoe like at, at, at his parents' house for Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh. And so for that, him to be in my movie, he did such a good job. Everyone did such a great job. I know. The performances are amazing. I'm so proud of everybody who worked so hard on that movie. I'm so happy for you. Like, oh. honestly, like, it's, I think this is just, it's just, I'm speechless, honestly. Thank I mean, you, Justine. <sighs> You're I, that's, I, oh I'm so gosh. glad too because we've been, you know, like, we've been doing this thing together yeah. for so long. Um, and it's been so wonderful to watch your life take all of its turns and your career go so wonderfully. And, um... Yeah, I just feel really grateful that I have all of these amazing 
people in my life who are my friends who all are also like supportive of my work. It means a lot to me. And I think that's what kind of goes back to the original YouTube community. Yeah, you know? I mean it's, it is, and it's still there. Like it's there. You know, we are still a community. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other stuff happening on YouTube, and that's fine. Yeah. But we are still a community, and that's so important to me. It is. We love you guys. We do genuinely. Um, let's see, I don't even know how much time. I could like sit here for three hours, so I don't know. We can do, do that. We... Okay. We could just do a sit. <laughs> You're smiling. I was giving my oh, serious sorry. face. You're being super cute. You don't even have a serious face. I do. When I'm when I have no emotion, I'm, I'm just sitting. Like show me like, your show me your show me your emotionless face. You do have kind of a mean no, emotionless face. No, it's so face. mad. And people are like, are you mad? I'm like, no. <laughs> my we, we there's a woman who works in my office um, who has a very mad, normal face. Yeah. It's awful because people always think I'm upset or angry. I'm like, nope, I'm I'm perfectly fine. This is just my face. This is just my face. I can't help it. Yeah. Uh, I did have one other question. Um, what would be a question that no one asked you while on tour that you were like, I can't believe nobody asked me this. No one ever asked me about Willem Dafoe. And ex really? I, mean, I never talked about him, and I was I felt bad because I was like, I'm sure Willem Dafoe doesn't watch like uh, Access Hollywood or whatever. But like, I was like, I feel like I should be talking about Willem. <laughs> um, what's another question that no one asked me? What I mean, I will talk about him all day long because he's, so he's cool. one of my favorite people. And I like. When he's I also. Like, I mean, he like so often he plays like these terrible, terrible people, mm -hmm. including in Fall in Our Stars. But um, he's really good at it. Yeah, but he's he's a lovely man and extremely professional and focused. Like he came to Pittsburgh prepared. That's like, good. So ready. And that was very impressive to me because he's obviously a very famous, well-established actor, but he was good. Like he is good at his job. It's always amazing to see people who are really competent because mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, like I'm kind of an <laughs> incompetent person generally. So I'm always just like astonished by people's competence. Yeah. You're like, High five for you, buddy. Anybody who can like, like change a doorknob or change the oil in their car. Mm -hmm. I can't do that either. But I, we can make YouTube videos. We've got that down. We're pretty good at editing. <laughs> yeah. Justine's better at editing than I am. I mean, well, I don't know about that. No, it's true. It's true. I can only do one kind of edit. It's called a jump cut. That's all you need to know. That's where you start. <laughs> That's where you start, That's and then what... you just make some transitions. Nope. After eight years, still just the jump cut. But I mean, if you, did you ever think that when you first started making YouTube videos that any of this would have ever happened. No, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that you're in the same boat. When no, when yeah. we started making YouTube videos, it never occurred to us that this could be a job. It was just a thing that I liked doing. Mm -hmm. It was a chance to talk to my brother and other people I liked. Yeah, and here you are. A crazy movie. Oh my gosh. Here we are in your real living room. Yeah. Your beautiful real <laughs> life living room. They asked me, they're like, what set would you guys like to be sitting at? I was like, I don't know, a wall? I don't care. Look but we this. got a really nice wall. We had the option of a bar. I was like, mm, maybe not. That's a little weird. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll just go to living room. I wish that our, um, I wish that the, the wall in my actual house looked like that. I don't have you a know? single piece of art in my house. You don't? No. My wife is an art curator. Really? She will help you. <gasps> she will give you great art, very cheap. Great. The yeah. only thing that I have, and it's still not even framed, is the original Mac logo that Susan Ooh. Kerr designed, and she has prints of it. So that's the only thing I have. That is a cool piece of it's artwork, pretty though. pretty cool. You got to frame it. I know, it's rolled up. I'm like, <laughs> should I do something with this? Oh my God, Justine, this is not acceptable. I know. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me. Is there anything else you want to tell them about the movie that, that you haven't told anybody? Uh, it I comes out on June 6th. Oh so yeah, that's important. So go see it, um, or not, it's up to you. But um, I just want to say thank you. It's so nice to see you. I'm such a big fan of yours, so it's fun to hang out. I'm your, I'm your biggest fan. Oh. oh my gosh. Oh, and the soundtrack is really good too. Yeah, the I soundtrack isn't it. bad. Oh, yeah. it's really good. I also pre-ordered it. Oh, well, good. <laughs> it's done. Okay, well, that's it. I love you guys. We love you. Go see the movie and let us know what you think of it. TFTBA. Yeah.